evening, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you all. Um, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I feel so much better right now than I did Sunday morning. Um, and, but it's, it's so good to see you. It's good to be with you as always. We are really, really coming in quick on this ending. Um, we're in the final section of this book. We're talking about how to tend our fire. So we have built a huge fiery ball of zeal and we were looking ways to like protect it and provide more fuel for it and, and all of those things and spread it as well to others. And now we've got to maintain, we got to tend that. This is how we build lifelong zeal. And so we're going to look at some things tonight, how we can adjust our habits to make this, uh, I mean, just a regular part of our life, something that we continue with forever. Um, and that's, that's the plan. Hopefully we can do that. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys about this. Before we begin, Aaron, Holly, would you care to lead us in a prayer? Apparently, Holly, we're so thankful to you for another day that you've seen fit to bless us with. And the opportunity to, to be able to come together as a study of your word. Please be with us. Thank you very much. So we're on page 98, uh, lesson 20. Tending our zeal fire and adjusting your habits. So let's, let's think about this as we go along. Someone can read the verse at the top, Psalm 71, 17 and 18. Awesome. Thank you very much. So this person is talking here. Um, when did they say they, they sort of began their journey? Yeah, from their youth. And what was the plan? What was the goal um, that they had? Yeah, it was like all the way from youth till old and gray. And I want to continue to do that. I, can, I want to continue to be zealous to do what God wants me to do, to declare your strength to this generation, your power to all who are to come. And it's just this, this mindset of constantly being focused in on this goal, of making it, a, and that's where we're getting to, our habits, how to do that from a very young age all the way up um, to your, your very last days. And so we're, we're trying to figure out how to do that more effectively and um, how, to, how to keep focused on that. Because uh, really, it's, it's kind of hard to maintain that focus. 100% all the time. Um, and, and so hopefully we can put some things into play in our life to help us achieve that. On the side there, it says warming up. We're going to turn to 1 Peter. And uh, there's actually a lot of stuff that Peter says. We're going to spend a little bit of time uh, in 1 and 2 Peter um, here towards the beginning of tonight. Uh, Peter actually does quite a bit to help us remember a few things and remind us of certain things. And he is, is, is kind of like a hallmark of, of what it is to persevere, to continue on through. Um, I mean, you, you know, he came a long way from when Jesus first found him and, and where he was to being who he is uh, by the time we get to the end of the New Testament. And there's some really good things that we learn from him. But uh, first, let's read this. Um, first Peter chapter 4, verse 3, verse says, For the time already passed is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And so when you read the, through that list, he's saying, like, look, guys, you, you've, you've had your fill. Like, you've, you've wasted enough time on all of this junk that you don't need to be, need to be involved in. Like, all the stuff that the Gentiles would pursue, all the things that people who were living without God would do, like, you have wasted enough time uh, in your life doing that. Um, and I don't want you to spend any more time focused on that. Like, the time that's, that's sufficient for doing all that, that's already passed. It's gone. Like, you've used up all that time that you need to. Um, and, you know, those bad habits, if you think about how much time that you've lost in your life by 
being involved, and maybe not even just this list, but think of any sinful activity or whatever. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty long list and probably a lot of time wasted on those things. And it's not just like a, a loss of time, but there's a, a loss of connection with the Lord, a loss of, of how, how far, how more far along you should be in your growth. Uh, and there, there's a lot of stuff there to consider with that. Um, and it's, it's kind of like you look, look back through your life. It's a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, just thinking about all the stuff that we used to be involved in, all the stuff that we used to do, how we spent our time. Well, um, Peter says, that's all behind you. Like, forget that. Like, that is in your past. We need to look forward to something else. We need to focus on something else. And he goes on to say a few things here. So we're in 1 Peter 4. Would someone care to read verses 7 through 11? Thank you very much. Do you notice like a sense of urgency in these verses? Like especially right at the beginning of verse 7. What, what does he say? How does he open up in verse 7? Yeah. It's right here. It's like the end of all things is near. Like we have to live our lives with that mentality, with that mindset. That, you know, all the time that you spent on, on stuff, junk that's just, just wasted, that has to be in our past. Because what we're looking forward to, it's right here. It, it's like we, we need to live with the end in mind. It, it's like we need to pretend like each moment could be your last because, well, I mean, it could. Um, it really could. And because of that, we have a goal. We're looking forward to what's coming. And we know that we have to be of sound judgment and sober spirit. And he, he starts out here with the purpose of prayer. So we need to be a prayerful people. That needs to be our like number one thing that, that we do all the time, constantly. And I think that that's some good advice here. You know, how do we start building habits of doing things that are productive and, and lead us to a more zealous life? We have to be praying all the time. And we have to be focused on that, be sober and have sound judgment and all that. But there's a few other things that he mentions as well. What does he mention we need to do in verse 8? Yeah, fervent love. Not just like occasionally, every, you know, once in a while when I, I think about you and I'll see you, but fervent. It's like continuous. It's something that is, is that we're zealous about. There we go. Uh, what about nine? Hospitality. And not just hospitality, but yeah, without complaint. You know, don't be like, well, I guess you can stay here or I'll, I'll, I'll take you some food, whatever. Like, no, it's, it's like we're, we're joyous about that. We need that fervent love that leads us to doing some of those other things with a good attitude. So not only hospitable, but without complaining and, and you know, focus on the service and doing that. You know, how, how are we doing with that? Um, now, look at the next one. Verse 10, this is a verse we used to start out a lesson a few weeks back. Um, it's, it's the one, as you have received a special gift. So for one... You have a special gift. God has given you a talent. You are a, a talented in, in ways that God wants you to be talented. And it was because of his grace that he allowed you to have that gift. So we need to use that in order to serve him. Uh, be good stewards of that gift. So whatever it is, you need to use that. And specifically in verse 11, he mentions uh, several areas where you might be gifted. So what are some of the areas there? Okay, speaking, yeah. Maybe your talent is speaking the word, teaching others, sharing the gospel uh, in, in a classroom setting, in a uh, you know, public forum setting, maybe preaching, maybe one-on-one -on -one conversations, whatever it is, yeah, maybe speaking, that's it. What else? Service. Yeah, service. Now that can look like a lot of different things. And if, if that is, is where you are best suited, 
go for it. Like be the best servant that you can be. And all of these things, we do it uh, because God supplies the strength for that. And we realize that that's what God wants us to be doing. And so, again, we realize the time is at hand. Uh, we have a limited amount of time left. And we don't need to waste it doing whatever things that would we were doing before that would slow us down. But we want to be wholeheartedly approaching God uh, and, and trying to do uh, the best we can there. All right. Any other thoughts or comments on, on any of that? How hard is it to start a new habit? It can be pretty challenging. Oh, there, you, there we go. Yeah, it's real easy to start. Yeah, uh, yeah. The month of January, we see a lot of that, right? Um, yeah. Well, speaking of which, January just passed a couple. You know, we're in March. How are those New Year's resolutions going? You know, um, if if you ask a lot of people around you, they'll be like, eh. It's not looking so good right now because there's a lot of times we have really good ideas and we start something. It's just the follow through that is the challenge. So we need to adopt a different mentality to be able to actually push forward and use those things and develop it, make it, make it a lifestyle instead of just uh, you know something that, that we want to start occasionally. So that's it. We, we need a good lifestyle. We need lifestyle changes. And that, that would be a good way to look at that. In this lesson, uh, the start of this says we're stirring, managing, and adjusting your fire. And if you think about how just fireplaces work, you, you see like the, the stuff, the tools that people use to keep fires going. Once you've got a, a, like a fire built in a fireplace, like you can't just leave it there, right? Because uh, eventually it'll just it'll die down and it's, it's gone. And sometimes even like there's still fuel in the fire. There's still like wood in there, but it's, it's not burning. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever had like a fire going and then it goes out, but you're like, the wood's right there. What happened? Well, you were lazy and you didn't do anything to, I'm not calling you lazy, but I am, but you didn't do anything to it. Like you gotta do stuff. You gotta move it around. The ashes build up. I mean, that, that just puts it out. So what you got to do is have something to get the ashes out, out the way. Those, those don't burn very well. And uh, you have like a little poker or whatever, and you move stuff around so that way the coals that are still hot, that are there, they have something to do and they, they reignite. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to even add like little pieces of wood, the kind of wood that you use to get the fire started in the first place to like get it like, big and roaring again. So all of those things, there's a lot that we have to consider to keep that fire going. And so if you want a long lasting fire in a fireplace um, or fire pit, where, wherever you're building your fire, um, you need to do stuff to maintain it and to think about how to remove the, the trash that's gonna build up uh, and prevent other things from coming in, but also adding things here and there. Uh, so just think about our life as, as this fire. Like imagine if, if you were, uh, you know, you are a fireplace and you're burning right. Like what's your fire looking like? Um, how, hopefully we've added some of the, the fuel in there. We've got some of these characteristics of Jesus that we put in there. Uh, and hopefully it's, it's, you know, at least some kind of blaze going. Um, but you know, at different points in our lives, we need to like kind of reevaluate and think about where am I? What is God doing with me right now? And uh, sometimes in life, uh, God does have to poke us a little bit, right? And uh, that's not, not comfortable. We don't like that. But sometimes we do need to be poked and pushed around and prodded um, to get moving again. And uh, that's, that's what we need. Uh, we need to constantly have that mentality as well. All right. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? It is an amazing thing. Like, if you think about how God works and how he operates and how he influences us. I mean, okay, could God have 
okay, th think about like from a creative standpoint before the, the universe began. Could God have created fire to, to work differently than it does? I mean, obviously, yeah. Um, you know, why, why did he make it to where uh, fire, like logs, they, they go out, they don't all burn up? Well, maybe so we could use an illustration here to be like, hey, this is you. You need to be stirred up sometimes and you need that. And uh, so a lot of the, the things that we have, a lot of the encouragements, you know, why do we assemble? Um, so we can stir each other up to love and good works. Um, and uh, I mean, we, there's all kinds of connections. And this is the beauty of scripture. I mean, you can just depending on your mindset, depending on the situation, you might read a passage and get something completely, totally different than you got before. Or it just ignites you in different ways because of, of how you're reading that. And so being here is a thing that should stir us up. And that is one major reason why we do it. Um, that, that's such an encouraging thing to be around others and to, to be able to, to get stirred up as well. Anything else? All right, so let's think about some great habits, um, things that, that we can do, things that we can think about, uh, and ways that we approach different situations that can help build our zeal, hopefully. So the first thing there under great habits is tend your zeal with reminders. And I will say this is something that doesn't really sound a whole lot of excitement going on there. It's not, not a very exciting thing to just think about the things that you've heard 18,000 times. Like, okay, I've, I've heard those a lot, so what do you want me to do? Like, I've, I've already, I know the gospel. I've heard the gospel message and, and all of that. Well, if you ever find yourself with that mentality, um, you know, the whole pride comes before the whole thing. Like, that's, that's where we're, we're headed. Peter constantly reminds, well, tells the people that, hey, all I'm showing you here, I'm not like, breaking any new ground. I'm not sharing anything new with you. I'm just offering up some reminders. And it is interesting. If you compare everything that's in first and second Peter and compare it to like, you can find pretty much everything that's there somewhere else. And it's like, okay, well, what's the purpose of this book? Why do we have that? Well, because he was offering reminders and you know, we, hopefully we could see that through the way that he, he shares that. Um, so we're not always just in the mindset of, I, I just always want to hear something new. I want to hear something exciting. We want, we want to keep those reminders because that is something that helps keep stirring our coals as, where, as well. Um, so again, and here that's the, the illustration is used of the same little sticks that got the fire started. We need to keep adding those too uh, because that keeps our fire going. As well, there's a few passages there. Uh, if you're in First Peter, go back to First Peter two. Someone read verse two. First Peter two two. As the Lord may desire that you remember the word that you may grow thereby. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, just like uh, newborn babies, the, the long for the the milk, we need to long for the pure milk of the word. Like uh, just the stuff that will help us to get rooted, to be steadfast, to be solid in the Lord. Um, you know, some versions, uh, like New American Standard says, grow in respect to salvation. And it's, it's just a really interesting way to think about that. Um, how do we grow in respect to salvation? Like I thought that once we became a Christian, we're like, that's, that's it. That's, you're saved. Well, that is true. But... There's a lot of growth that comes after that. And you grow stronger roots. You grow deeper faith. And uh, you get even more personal connection with that. And so definitely got to think, think through that. Uh, what about 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13? Someone read that for us. They are effectively as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up. Awesome. Thank you very much. So he's like, as long as I'm still living, I want to keep reminding you of the same stuff. Um, and that's, again, we might think, why? Like, why would you just keep reminding us of the same things? Don't, isn't there something new for us to learn? Well, uh, I think we're not going to get anywhere if we don't really deeply understand um, the foundational principles. And so we need that for sure. And uh, the last one in chapter 3, verse 1, 2 Peter 3, 1. Someone read that. Both of them, I am stirring up your sincere minds by way of reminders. 
I think it's a bit ironic the way that he reminds them that he is reminding them three times. Uh, like, he just, <laughs> guys, don't forget, I'm reminding you. Uh, and so it's, it's like, even in this, uh, it's, it's a pretty great reminder. Um, so yeah, if we ever get to that point where we're just like, I, I know it all, I, if we ever say that, goodness, Lord help us. Like, that's, that's not a good attitude to have. But even if it's just like a simple sermon, simple lesson, and you're like, yeah, I, I know this, I, I know this story, I've heard it before, I understand, I know the punchline, I know where this is going, like, maybe you need it even more right then. Um, like, we, we don't need to just tune things out because we think we already know them. Um, again, the way scripture is written, something might like hit you in a way that you hadn't seen before, or just maybe you need that reminder to get back to the basics to begin with. And so maybe that's what you need right now. And that's how to you know, build an even bigger fire. So it's a lot to consider, uh, but I think that's important. Any other thoughts on that section? Remind you. That is all. I, I, I don't know if you can relate to that, but I, I know several times since I've been attending here, I've heard so many different lessons that I'm like, why had I never seen that? Or why had I thought about that before? Like, that was just, it was really cool. And that was really encouraging. I mean, it is. And, and just, that's another reason why I think we need each other and we need to come together because there are some people who are like, I'll just read my Bible on my own. I'm all, all right. I don't need to assemble and all that. I mean, we need this. We need to have the, the sounding boards and be able to hear things from different perspectives because, uh, like, really, like, there's so many different things that we can see and hear and understand um, and things that we never considered before. So good, good stuff. Anything else on reminders? Just most of the reminders are foundational love, grace, those things that we see up a lot and we need a lot. And you see some newer people we or we have recently come in and and, and they will say revelation. Well, that's not where they need to go. I mean, they think that's exciting and new and it's refreshing, but that you know you've got to understand a lot before you're ready to take on revelation. Right. Exactly. Amen. Um, there are some very meaty subjects that you need to make sure your your teeth have grown in before you can really sink into that. And like, there's no way that you could understand Revelation without understanding well the Old Testament and, and understanding who God is and what He's about. And there, there's just a lot of things we need to get in place before we get there. And I mean, those those concepts that we talk about as being the foundational and, and they are the love, mercy, grace, those things. Um, those are the topics that are just like inexhaustible. You know, I, there's just there's no way that we could fully understand. Like, could you ever say? I fully grasp the love of God. Like, no, or God's mercy, God's grace. Like, no, there's no way that we could just understand that. Um, and sometimes I think that, no, I, I get it. God loves us. Yeah. Do you really? Like, he loves us? What does that mean? Like, how does that work? Um, and we, we need that so much more. Um, and so really a sign of maturity is, is recognizing that we don't know about it. We don't know all we need to know. We want to keep diving into that and see what it means more. And then that's what makes things like Revelation so special because it's like, whoa, God's mercy is really big and he really loves us and he, he really has it together because look at what's going on behind the scenes. It's, look at what, like this is crazy. And so like you just get a deeper appreciation for the hard things when you, you keep going back to the fundamentals and, and get those in place.
Good call. Anything else? All right, the second one, tend your zeal with godly sorrow. Uh, we do need messages about joy, love, and grace, and this, this is foundational. We need to keep going back to that. Um, but what we need to understand is that our sin separates us from God. And uh, we, we also need to understand that as Christians, there, there's still sin that comes up. And there are still times when we disappoint the Lord and we don't do what's right. Now, the way that we handle that is really important because um, I'll tell you, and even from, from personal experience, um, and you know, this, is, this is something that I've done. It's like if I find myself in a sin and it's like, okay, I, I know I shouldn't have done that and I just I know it's wrong. Um, sometimes what I do is in my head, I'm just like, okay, that means that I just need to read my Bible a lot. I need to, to, to pray a lot. I need to like just really go out of my way to make sure I'm encouraging others and, and being a servant and just throwing myself into the work. Those are all good things to do. But before you do any of that, you need to repent. Stop. Just stop. Like, open yourself up to God. And I'm, I'm saying this to myself, you know. Like, I open me up to God and, and just pour out my heart and just know that, God, I, I messed up. And I shouldn't have done that. And just being vulnerable with the Lord and just knowing that what we have done separated us from God. 2 Corinthians seven eleven is, is the passage we, we go to quite a bit to talk about this godly sorrow and, and what that looks like. So, I mean, somebody read that. 2 Corinthians 7, 11. Oh, well, that. <laughs> For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. That's a much better verse. Thank you so much. Um, I, re I repent of giving you the wrong verse. Um, and this is, this is it. The, the godly sorrow which produces repentance. Like... Sometimes we, we do try to like short circuit that, that thought process and we, we try to skip a few steps there. Um, and it, it's just remember, we don't have a works based faith. It's not that I, I did this sin, so I need to say this many prayers or I need to um, you know, read this much of my Bible or, or whatever. That's not how it works. It's we sin and then we have godly sorrow about that and that leads us to repent. And we want to change it. We want to do better. One of the ways that helps us to do better is to draw closer to the Lord, which can be through prayers and, and reading the Bible and meditating and, and those sorts of things. But don't, like, don't skip out on that important step of godly sorrow. We need to realize where we are, what we've done, and let that godly sorrow drive us back to God immediately. Um, and that's what helps to keep our zeal burning. Because you know what happens um, if, if you skip out on that step entirely, especially if you string together a bunch of sins when this has happened a bunch? Like you, you completely leave out God in the equation. And what happens is you just keep getting used to, well, I'll do, okay, now I'm saying the prayers, now, now I'm reading. But then I keep falling back into the same sin. What's wrong with me? There must be something wrong. And then that causes your zeal to burn out. Because you just get tired of getting caught up in the same stuff over and over, and you don't know how to fix it. And you're like, well, I'm praying as hard as I can. I'm, I'm like studying as hard as I can. Well, you know, we have skipped out on this part entirely. We have to, and it goes back again to God's love, mercy, grace. We need to keep coming back to that because that's what will help us to truly have that repentance. And, and then we will bear fruit worthy of repentance. Uh, and so that's that's our goal there. Um, and this is this is a huge lesson. And I think it's something that really puts out a lot of people's zeal fires. You know, like when we just get caught up in sin and we just can't seem to break that cycle that you just keep going back to the same stuff. It's like, well, I, I must be worthless. I'm, I'm a miserable, no good person. And, you know, God's never going to be able to use me because this is who I am. no. Keep coming back to the Lord. Be vulnerable, be open, have godly sorrow, and repent. Any thoughts on that? Questions? <coughs> Uncomfortable stuff to talk about, but it is really important, and uh, we need to really consider that. 
How about this next one? Tend your zeal with friendly competition. Uh, I, like, I like this one a lot. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 2. Someone can read that. All right, do you see what Paul's doing here? Like, this is, this is really cool. This is really smart. He's like, hey, guys, this group over here, like, yeah, they're doing really good. And then he encouraged this other group with that information. He's like, hey, you know what this group did? They are doing some really good stuff. Uh, and it's really encouraging to me that they were doing that. So this other group's like, all right, okay, I see that. I see what you're doing. And they get involved, and their zeal is stirred up because of what other people were doing. Um, and that's a little, that's healthy competition, okay? It's not like, they're, they're not like, well, I want to do better than you. Like, it's, it's more of, okay, if they can do it, I can do it too. Um, and it's, it's like this encouraging type of friendly competition. Definitely, we got to be so careful not to get into a, a fight with other groups and congregations. Um, but use some of the stuff that they've got going on as inspiration. To, if they can do it, why can't we? You know, if, they, if they're doing all these, these great things, if they are, are spreading the gospel, if they are being so encouraging and they're, they're being servants to their communities, why, why can't we do that? Like, and why can't we enjoy some of that success as well? Um, and that's, that's one good thing about hearing from people from different areas who are doing really well, right? Uh, we hear of people who are in very difficult situations preaching the gospel and people are responding. And it's like people are listening, people are obeying. And you, you see people, uh, even in, in congregations like ours, that are thriving and doing some great things. And so uh, instead of like being bitter and like, what are they doing? Like, no, we, we take that and we're like, ah, I like what they're, they're doing. Like, we can do some of that. Um, and you use some of that as, as fuel to keep going. Um, and that's, that's just something to help you there. Um, again, it's not about who, if you're doing better than others. It's, you know, we, we need to keep that in mind as well. But uh, we can use some of that to just spur us on to do uh, a little bit more than we were before. Any other thoughts on that topic? This works individually, too. Like, it's not just at the congregational level, but we look at how other people are doing and, and what other people are involved in. And when you hear about somebody who does something um, it's just a really spiritual and they're really involved. It's like, ah, yeah, okay, I like that. I can, I can be more like that too. Um, and that's, that's just like with anybody, with anything, we can use that to help push us to be more like God. Um, and that's, that could be a productive use of zeal for sure. Next one down here says, tend your zeal by looking to the reward. This is kind of what we opened with uh, in, in 1 Peter, talking about how he said, like, the end is near. we got to be prepared for that. We understand that, that you know, when, in the whole grand scheme of things, we don't know how much time we have left. And uh, we need to treat every second like it's our last. And one way to do that is to think about what's coming. Think about the reward. Go to Hebrews 11. Um, now... Hebrews 11, just looking through this uh, a little bit, in the, the section 23 through 29, it's talking about Moses, how when he was born, uh, I mean, you know the situation with Moses, where he went, uh, how he was raised, and all that. There was a decision that he had to make. When he grew up, uh, what could he have done? He chose to be Pharaoh's son. Yeah, could have been Pharaoh's son. And, you know, in, in there, there's, you know, one, one universe where he... Could have been Pharaoh at some point, maybe, potentially. And, like, you think about that and the position, the power that ancient Egypt had and what he could have been. Um, but instead of taking the present glory, what did he do? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He chose to be with the people that were mistreated. Um, and he chose the hard path, like the path that he could have been was easy street. Like, and this, and if we really think about it, our decisions today, like you think about any decision about, you know, whether I will serve God in this moment or whether I will serve myself. 
and I will enjoy the passing pleasures of sin right now, uh, or am I going to serve God? Like, there's probably nothing that, that you could experience that would compare to the, like, the glory that Moses could have had physically, right? Um, about like being essentially fair, living in, in that house and enjoying all those things. Like he had a lot, a, a lot that he could have enjoyed. But he was like, nah, not going to do that because I'm looking for a greater reward. I'm looking for something else. And that is the common thread through Hebrews 11 for sure. Um, people who were able to look past this life to see what was coming next. And that's our goal. We want to be able to, to be a people that continues to look forward to heaven, to the reward, to what's, what, you know, what is to come. Um, not looking with our eyes of flesh, but seeing through eyes of faith what is, what's the real substance, what's really there. Amen. And I, I like that in, in verse 8 there, uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me that on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who love his appearing. So it's, like, it's, it's really encouraging to hear that from Paul, just understanding the stuff that he gave up, uh, all of the, the, the things that he had trusted in before, and now he is looking forward to that crown of righteousness. And, and you know, he's, he's really looking forward to that. And he says, this is it's just, not just for me. It's for everyone who loves his appearing. Um, and that is an interesting phrase there. Those that love his appearing. Um, if you really think about that, um, you know, to say that we love God is one thing. But to say that we love his appearing, like, are we living our life in such a way that makes it obvious that we love his appearing? Like, are we living our life so that we would, we would be so grateful if God came right now to take us? You know, or is it, are we living a life that's more like later? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get it together later. Or I'll, I'll be ready someday, just not right now. Like, if we're living a zealous life and we're living as we should, we're looking at that goal and we're like, I want it now. I, I want God to come now. And I, I, want, I want to be ready. And so we need to love his appearing. Uh, and that's, that's just a good way to look at that. Thank you. No. Anything else? I'm looking forward. Unfortunately, there are some toxins that can affect us uh, along the way. A little toxicology for you here. Toxic habits. Um, not all fire is good fire. Not everything you put in the fire should go in a fire. Um, it, there are certain things if you burn, you should get away immediately because uh, it will release harmful chemicals into the air. Um, and there's, there's a lot of bad things that can come from that. So essentially, be careful what you put in your fire. Be careful what you add. If, if you're truly trying to, to live a zealous life and you're burning this pure fire for the Lord, and that's, that's, that's your life, that's what you're doing then you need to be so careful with not putting other things in there and not supplementing that. So this, the word zeal that we have uh, in the New Testament used can also be translated as envy when it's talking about personal ambitions. Uh, and it's, it's talking about things that, that you are, are passionate. Like, for example, James 3, verse 16 uh, James 3.16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. The word zeal was in there. Like you read that in English and you're like, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, it is. But that's being zealous for the wrong thing. It's the selfish ambition. And that's, that's one thing that we got to be careful with. <laughs> Uh, you know, that word being the same in Greek uh, and, and how it's translated in English is, is different. Uh, it's, it really shows you how close those mentalities are. It's, it's very dangerous if, if you are so focused on the wrong type of zeal, it can lead to envy. And it can lead to uh, like a, a personal, um, you know, preference type thing. 
And so we, we got to be really careful with how we view others, uh, how we view the work of others, and uh, how we view ourselves. Um, it's it never should be a tool to to please ourselves at all. It's always something that pleases the Lord, and that's why introducing some of the vain pursuits, some of the extra stuff that distract us, take us away, because uh, that makes it all about us, and it puts the focus on us where it should not be. Their zeal for mere traditions. This is a this is a dangerous thing too. Some people are very hardcore about their beliefs. Sometimes that's a good thing to be hardcore about your. A lot of times it's a good thing to be hardcore about your beliefs, but it depends on what your beliefs are. What what is the basis of your beliefs? Is your beliefs based on the tradition of, of just how you were raised, how you grew up? Because that's what Paul said he used to be zealous for. He was zealous. For, like as a Pharisee um, to pursue righteousness according to the old law um, and, and it was it was the traditions that they were so dead set on um, and you see the interactions of the Pharisees with Jesus all the time it's like why did your disciples not wash their hands like what are they doing um, and they even said why do they not follow the traditions of the elders uh, remember that and so sometimes I think that we can be zealous over the wrong things. Um, we, can, we can take one aspect of, of what we do religiously and, and we can focus so much on that that we, we forget that there's, there's traditions involved. So we just need to be careful as we analyze uh, the things that we are, are trying to hold on to and be yoked to Christ, not the traditions that, that we have. So keep coming back to that. There's a couple other things here. Stay away from rash commitments. Sometimes in our burning zeal, we just want to do something. We want to do it quick and we want to just go for it. Well, we still need to exercise wisdom. We need to exercise self-control. And we need to think, is this a good idea? Is this something I need to be involved in? Ask for counsel. Some of the like mentoring stuff we talked about last time. Like reach out, find out, figure out, is this actually God's will for me? Is this what I need to do? Um, and this goes on to connect with uh, acting on our own assumptions. Sometimes we just assume that my idea is a really good one, so I'm going to do it because obviously this is what God wants. That's not always the case. Just like uh, David and Nathan were like, hey, let's build a temple for God. Let's put all this stuff together. We're going to do it. And God was like, no, 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 no. That's not for you to do. That is a good work. That should be done. But it's not for you. That's for Solomon. And he's going to do that. Um, so sometimes we, we try to rush into things that uh, aren't really the most productive things for us to do. Maybe it is a good work. Maybe it needs to be done, but maybe someone else needs to do it. Uh, and so we need to consider how to, to do that. And part of this is working together, having that unity that we talked about, and figuring out what other people's strengths, weaknesses are so we can accomplish those things that we need to get done. All right. That was a lot. There was a lot of really good stuff in here. Any thoughts, comments uh, on anything on this lesson? You guys said it best. It's great. No, yeah, sometimes we just need to keep our mouth shut and we need to think more. That's exactly right. Uh, I think that's, that's a good, good way to think about this. Um, yeah, we need to keep, keep that zeal going. We need to continue burning, uh, but we don't need to make any rash decisions and jump into things without thinking through. All right, Lord willing, Sunday morning, we will talk about imitating your heroes uh, and we'll finish up with that. Thank you all.